Hello, my name is Ray Hughes and I'm an interviewer for the Veterans History Project conducted by the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And today's date is the 27th of January, 2020. And this interview is being conducted at the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library in Cincinnati, Ohio, of course. And our cameraman today is Brian Powers, who is the head of that department here at the library. And today we have the honor and privilege of interviewing the Vietnam War veteran, Ira Piles. <laughs> and uh, Ira, your last name is spelled P-Y-L-E-S. P-Y-L-E-S, yeah. yes. Ira, if you would, uh, what was your uh, date of birth and uh, where were you born at? I was born in Carroll County, Carrollton, Kentucky. Uh, December the 12th, or 19th, 1939. December the 12th? Uh, December 19th. Oh, December 19th. Yeah, of 19, 12, 1939. 39. Yeah. And uh, what were your parents' names? Uh, John and Louise Piles. Uh, and your mother's maiden name was what? Ashby. Ashby? Uh-huh. A-S-H-B-Y? A-S-H-B-Y. Now, did you have any brothers and sisters there? Uh, have, uh, they was uh, seven of his children, two, two deceased now. I see, and what uh, were their names, all right. Uh, John Franklin Piles, uh, uh, Mary Sue, uh, well, actually her maiden name is, uh, uh, now, uh, well, Sue Piles, uh, uh, myself, Carolyn Piles, uh, Terry Piles, David Piles, and Mike Piles. Yeah. And two of them are now deceased? Two of them now deceased, uh, David and, uh, and uh, my brother John, my oldest brother. Uh, what did your uh, dad do for a living, Ira? Well, started out farming with my dad and then uh, graduated from high school, worked at uh, a little factory in Madison, Indiana called Miles and, Myers and Son. And then got a job with the State Highway Department when they're building 75. I don't like to brag about that too much. Coming up a big cut of the hill. But uh, worked there and then got drafted in the Army. Is that you or, or your dad? That was me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my dad, he, he farmed all his life. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. He and, was, um, was. Did, you, did you know your grandfather um, on your I, dad's I side? Was, uh, I was named after him. Uh, his name is Ira Johnson Piles, and uh, he was Carroll County farmer. And I was six years old when he passed. I see. And my grandmother, I was uh, just a baby, maybe six months old when she passed. And your grandmother, uh, grandmother's name was grandmother Piles' name uh, was uh, uh, I can't even think of her first name right off the hand. Uh, Lula Bell. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And, and your uh, and you, her maiden name was Garrett. Garrett. Yeah. I see. And uh, what about on your mother's side? Did you know your grandparents on her? I, I didn't know my grandfather. He died when my mother was young. But uh, Lucille Ashby was her name, and her maiden name was McKay. McKay. Uh huh. I see. And they all lived down there in Carroll. In, in Carroll County. Yeah. Carroll County. Yeah. My grandmother Ashby lived right out of Prestonville, and ran a dairy farm. And they delivered milk. My mother, when she was in high school, she delivered milk by horse and wagon to people in Carrollton. I see. Yeah. And uh, what school did you go to as a boy? As grade a boy? School. Uh, grade school was English, grade school. And then I went to high school at, uh, went to the eighth grade there, and then went to high school at Carrollton High School, which is now Carroll County High School. I see. And um, what kind of, you said you had different jobs when you were a young boy growing up? Yeah, uh, farm with my dad. And then uh, when I got out of high school, went to work for about a year or so at uh, Myers and Son in Madison, Indiana, and still farm with my dad. And then uh, uh, got a job with the State Highway Department as an uh, engineer's helper, rodman and chainman. And then that's, after that, I got uh, drafted in the Army. I see. 
What churches did you all belong to when you were born? Uh, English Christian Church when, when I was a kid and still belong to uh, Burlington Church of Christ off of 18 mm -hmm. in Boone County. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you know Did you know your wife, your future wife, uh, when you were growing up? Uh, no, no. I met her when I was in the service. I see. And um, you were you say um, when you were drafted um, into the army, you were drafted what on I show the twelfth day of April, nineteen sixty-three. Right. Where, uh, where'd you go when you were drafted? Did you come up here to Covington or Cincinnati? Uh, or? No, went to went to Louisville. Louisville. Louisville, and then from there on to Fort Knox. Uh, uh, Fort Knox down in Kentucky. Tennessee in Kentucky, border. yes. Uh, How long were you down at Fort Knox? Uh, went to uh, basic training there. And how long was that? Uh, or, uh, I want to say nine weeks, something like that. Yeah. Uh, what kind of training happened at Fort Knox? It, it was uh, just qualifying with weapons and and chemical warfare and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Went to the gas chamber, right? Up and down Misery and, and Agony. Is that the name of the two hills? The two hills, there? yeah, yeah, many times. Uh -huh. Were you in good shape when you were down there? I was in good shape because I was a farm boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the PT didn't bother me at all. Now, did you all fire an M1 rifle down there? I M1, oh. M1 there. And um, was there anything besides physical training down there and rifle range? And, uh, a, lot, a lot of PT. Uh, and uh, but mainly that was it getting you ready for AIT and uh, AIT being advanced infantry training. Right. And after nine weeks, you you took that. Where was that at? Uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. What city is near there? Uh, Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. I see. What was that? What was AIT about? But basically just advanced uh, infantry. Had a few fo uh, field problems, bivouac and all that kind of stuff. Any schools or classrooms type stuff? Uh, not really, uh, a little bit. Uh, you'd have uh, a little bit of stuff like that, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, not a whole lot. A lot of bivouacking and things like a that? A lot of bivouacking, field you, problems out out in the woods. Mm -hmm. Any other weapons training besides a rifle? Or? Uh, well, we had uh, probably uh, the 45 mm -hmm. pistol, uh, uh, M grenade, uh, uh, what was it? M I want to say M79 grenade launcher, uh -huh. uh, stuff like that, uh -huh. machine gun. Uh, had uh, Browning automatic uh, uh, rifle uh -huh. that we fired to. Just about forget kind of something that stuff after my age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and how long did that training last? Uh, it, it was a, a good eight or nine, ten, twelve weeks. I see. And then went into advanced in NCO school. Where was that at? Uh, that was the same place. We stayed there at Fort Jackson. And uh, advanced NCO school, what's that about? But leadership and stuff like that taught you to, if you ever made platoon sergeant, taught you how to direct troops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And more about leadership. Was there a lot of classroom study in there? Uh, uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. And how long did that training last? It, it was again like six, I think it was exactly six weeks. I see. And then they was getting us ready to go to Germany, taking shots and everything, and then that's when they called the names out of, I think there was 15 or 20 of us and sent us to the old guard. And uh, what is the old guard? It's the uh, president is supposed to be president's own troops, and you 
do uh, burial in Arlington Cemetery, parades, uh, just all kinds of ceremonious stuff. Now, so do you recall when you, uh, you must, to be in the old guard, you had to be, for lack of a better word, exemplary, an exemplary soldier, uh, somebody who's head and shoulders above the, a normal soldier, so to speak. Uh, yeah, you, you, I think they picked out guys that wanted to do their job and, and, uh, and not give them any, any trouble. Well, you must have shown that uh, intellectually and physically uh, the, a, higher, a higher caliber man to begin with, or yeah. you wouldn't have been chose for that. Yeah. Well, You're modest there, I know that, but yeah. I think that would be a given fact. Yeah. Did you have to go into special training for that hour? Uh, not, not really, just what, what they put out there for you. Uh, so when you found out you were going to be in that outfit, did you know what it was? I had no clue. I was dumbfounded. Uh, had no clue. And then our platoon sergeant, uh, he had been in the old guard before, and he, and he advised us a little bit what we was getting into. And uh, if you didn't like spit and polish, you didn't belong there, because they, they wanted you uh, looking sharp. Um, so where did you go when you found out that you, the 15 or 20 of you guys was going into the old guard? They put us on a train, and uh, first thing I saw was the Washington Monument going into D.C., looking out the train window, and didn't know, it, you know, had no clue exactly what we was getting into, but uh, it didn't take you long to, to find out what you was into when you got there. Where were you going to be stationed at, or where did you live? Uh, I was supposed to have been going to Frankfurt, Germany, and uh, they we was getting shots for going overseas and stuff, and uh, but that that didn't happen. So where did you uh, where did you go when you got to Washington D.C.? What what location? We went to Fort Myer there on South South Base. Uh, Fort Myers, that's right across from Washington, D.C., in, Virgi yeah, yeah, in so, Virginia? Yeah, in Virginia, yeah. yeah. And uh, they, uh, well, we had orders already, and I knew I was going to Company B from there. And we went there and, and uh, got situated. Um, was there more training? Well, all, uh, a lot of parades, uh, a lot of PT and stuff because uh, they want to keep you in shape and uh, and of course like I say it's ceremonial you, you, uh, like uh, I was on a casket team they had you practicing carrying caskets folding a flag and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and same way with the rifle team uh, I only did that once or twice mostly stayed on the, the flag team but uh, you practice uh, firing the volleys and stuff but 90% uh, of my time was on the casket team. And by casket team, what do you mean? Uh, did, did you uh, pick up uh, uh, soldiers that had been killed or died? Or? So, soldiers that, yeah, that were buried in Arlington Cemetery. Carried the casket and uh, buried them and then you, rep you presented the flag to the next of kin and sometimes the next of kin wasn't there but uh, they just uh, folded the flag and give it to the, the pastor or ever who was doing the, the funeral. Uh -huh. the, uh, did you have to maintain the same type of structure that the guys did in Company A, who were the ones at the Unknown Soldier. I mean, I'm talking about as far as spit and polish your shoes. Oh, oh most definitely. Your uniforms. Most definitely. How often do you have to stand inspection, so to speak? Uh, about, I want to say every four or five months, mm -hmm. you'd have a big inspection. They'd come through and check everything, your shoes and everything. 
Are you living in a barracks at that L time? Lived in a barracks, yes. Uh huh. And uh, how often did you, how often were you called upon for? Uh, tell us about what a normal day would be for you in Company B. Well, uh, if you had funeral direct, if you did uh, funerals, uh, you'd have uh, two or three funerals a day, and I'd say couple of hours for each funeral, and then you'd be off a couple of hours and then maybe do another funeral. And uh, it was just nor normal duty, and occasionally you catch grave, uh, not grave guard, uh, uh, regular guard service, uh, where like at a finance place or someplace that they have guards, if, if you, uh, you know, got caught, caught with that. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it, it was actually, you was up early in the morning, but by four o'clock you was pretty well off, uh, off duty. So you was on your own, mm -hmm. unless you had guard duty or KP or something like that. What was by guard duty? What do you mean by that? It it was uh, where at, for example. Uh, well, they'd have like financial, uh, a bank or places like that, that they'd want to locked up. And they'd have you stand in front of that. Uh, motor pool, uh, going around the motor pool, making sure nobody was in and out that. So just, just places like that. And uh, you had to pull KP also? Yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, now I don't think they, Army has KP, but uh, we did then. Uh, now, were you living in the old-fashioned World War II barracks, or did you have new barracks? Uh, they, they was well. I wouldn't say they're new. Uh, they're, I'm probably they're probably new now, but they they were brick buildings. Oh, you were in a brick brick building, yeah. I see. But not like Fort Knox was old wooden buildings and and wooden floors and stuff like that. So um, you were, um, you would have been, um, uh, I think you told me you were there when uh, President Kennedy got assassinated? Right, right. What were you, when did you hear about the assassination and where were you? Actually, we were, had been at AP Hill for two weeks, uh, firing weapons and things, requalifying and stuff. and and the mortar group was shooting mortars and stuff like that. And then we were on the way back to Arlington when someone had a cell phone, or not a cell phone, a, a transistor radio. Uh, I don't think cell phones existed no. then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah, the tra transistor and, radio. And yeah, yeah uh, you could hear a pen drop when he said, oh my God, the president's been shot. And then he sent back and said he's dead. And then we were on uh, on alert, and as soon as we got back to barracks, everybody was spitting, pressing uniforms, and shining their shoes and everything, getting ready uh, for what what might happen. And we was on alert again, but uh, it was just wasn't much went on up in D.C. then or, or Arlington then. It, it was TV and everything was was nil then. Mm -hmm. What were your first duties after you heard about that? Just, just actually waiting to see what they wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, first, actually my first duty was going to the, uh, during the funeral, uh, being at the cathedral. Uh, you know, open the car door for the, after the procession came through, or the caissons, open the car door for uh, First Sergeant Perry, and myself, and uh, Spec Ford McBride, we opened the car door for a vicinity of every country in the world that was there at the funeral. And uh, you recall who some of them were that you opened the car doors for or asked? The, the only one that I recognized was Golda Meir and, and, and De Gaulle. Uh -huh. They were alive then, and, and uh, I mean, you couldn't help but recognize them. Right. But the uh, rest of them, I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a lot of movie stars come through too that you recognize some of them, but uh, but I don't recall who they Nixon, were now. Did you meet Nixon then or not? Pardon me. Did you meet Nixon then? I after after everybody went into cathedral, they moved us off to the side, and Nixon come over and shook her hand and asked us how uh, he wasn't we were pre- being treated. Yeah, he wasn't president. He, he was not president then. Uh-uh. Uh, um, uh, did you meet Johnson then? Uh, I, I, I didn't meet Johnson, but we uh, I was at his, uh, the whole company marched in his inaugurational parade. And that night I was at the inaugural ball. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, he was leaning over my shoulder, shaking hands with people when we separated the crowd, which, uh, well, he was a big guy, too. Mm-hmm. Did he speak to you all at all? Say then. Did he speak to you guys at all? Uh, not really. Uh-huh. Not really. He how, was just... How close was he to you? I actually brushed over my shoulder when he was shaking hands, uh, yeah. And we actually got a photo of our and we got a, a keychain from the president, uh, and which I still have, uh, uh, President Johnson. Were you able to go in the cathedral at all during this? Uh, no, no, uh, we, we didn't go uh, in, in the cathedral. Now, when Kennedy uh, laid uh, uh, in the cap, in a rotunda, now my wife, she went through, but it took her like seven, eight hours to get through. Were you married at that time? Uh, no, uh, no, honestly, was not married at that time. Uh, uh, yeah. She was my fiance then. Yeah. Um, and did you go through uh, to see his grave inside the rotunda? Say again. Did you go inside the rotunda yourself? Uh, no, I did not go in there myself. Uh-uh. What were your duties then? Well, actually, after after the, that, uh, we. Uh, was back at the barracks, and then uh, after the funeral was over the next day, that next morning, I was standing grave guard at the, the Eternal Flame. And we'd lay wreaths, or, or uh, people would throw in rosaries over on his grave and stuff. When you say the Eternal Flame, that's the, the grave site of John F. Kennedy? Uh, of Kennedy, yes, uh-huh. And you were standing guard there? I standing guard there, yes. I did that for actually quite a few months besides uh, burial detail, you know, that we had. Tell me, tell me about standing guard there at the Eternal f- Flame. Was it, were there more than one of you there? Uh, they, they was two of us. And who was there with you? Uh, an- another, another company uh, from Company B. But uh, you just march up and down and cross and just kind of circled it. and. Uh, it had a little white picket fence around it, and uh, that was about the extent of it. Now, if you got caught at the end of the day, they closed at five o'clock. If you was on the last detail, it'd be seven or seven thirty before they got all the people out of the out of the cemetery, because the cemetery was locked, and they would cut the gates off, and uh, there'd be people standing outside wanting to get in, but uh, they'd cut them off at five o'clock and. Usually the weather was pretty cold and you was ready to get out of there when... Uh, that was November and December? And yeah, yeah, January. yes, yeah, yes. You, you yeah, it, it was in cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. And your purpose there was ceremonial, but to guard against people coming on the... Exactly, yeah. The, and you tried to keep them from throwing rosaries over and they'd, they'd have wreaths and things that they'd want you to set and you'd take the wreath and place it by the grave. But they didn't want people throwing stuff over on the grave. But uh, how are you going to keep them from it? You know, yeah. as they're going by, they give you a dirty look if you'd tell them not to throw it. You know, but uh, it did happen. Mm-hmm. And so you had a white picket fence around it, and you yeah, were, yes. Uh-huh. Did you, were you stationary, or did you march around? Uh, actually, you mar- you marched around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, just slowly walked, mm-hmm. but uh, 
And Post, you were carrying a rifle at that time? Uh, no, uh, we, we didn't have anything. Just our, our blues on and white gloves and spit shine shoes and, and stuff like that. And that's when the Army had a blue uniform, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uniform? Yeah, blue uniform. That's the uh, history of the old guard. Got a little leather patch on your shoulder too uh, uh, that simulates the old guard. Did you keep your uniform, Ira? I did have, but I don't know whatever happened to them now. I, I actually had them in my brother's house uh, stored and uh, his house caught a fire and, and, and it burnt. Oh. But I, I did have a set of blues and things and then we had a like for summertime, we had a khaki uniform that was real dressy too. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, the blues look probably the best. Yeah. How long did you stand guard there at President Kennedy's gravesite? Uh, two hours. I mean, well, at a time. Uh, oh, at a time. At well, well, two time hours. Time. You was on two hours, and then off two hours, and then back two hours. All right. So it's it was like that. Rotated you, like that. Were you there six hours a day then? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're about, uh, as I remember, yeah. But um, uh, two on, two off, uh, ever how how it came out. Two on, two off, and then two on again. Yeah, yeah. And then that was that would be a day shift. Yeah, yeah, a daily shift. Yes. Yeah. And how many months or weeks did you perform that duty? I, it's according uh, with the whole company, uh, probably twice a week uh, out of a five day week. Well, they had Sundays too if you'd get caught. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it wasn't all that bad. But I mean, how many, how, how long did you do that? For months or? Oh uh, yeah, uh, actually till they uh, redid the uh, Eternal Flame. Uh, or, well, they, they uh, they moved, actually redid the grave site. And then I don't think after that they ever, you know, had people guarding the grave then. What do you mean they redid the grave site? What? They, they the, I, I've seen the grave since then, but I don't know, recall exactly what it, what it was, but uh, uh, they had the eternal flame, but they, they made it a lot more modern looking. Uh, and more permanent? But more, per yeah, that, that's, that's the word I should use, permanent, yes. Uh -huh. Did they take down the picket fence? Yeah, yes, the picket fence is gone, yeah. So uh, you were performing that duty for at least two or three months? Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. And then, it's like I say, retirement parades or... or What's uh, a retirement parade? Uh, it's when... Uh, somebody retires from service, like a general or something like that, they'd have a big ceremony and parade for him mm -hmm. uh, when they retired. There's a lot of, of uh, retired, well, a lot of uh, brass that live on uh, the old, uh, south post or north post of the old guard. A lot of, lot of military high rank there. Is that, is that Fort Myers you're talking Fort about? Fort Myers, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. A lot of people retired and lived there, high yeah, ranking. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. Uh, lived there and are still on duty there too. Mm -hmm. Did you meet any uh, high ranking important men? Or guard? Did, but but not knowing who now, don't not remember what their names were or anything like that. A few, but not not many. Now the old guard is also. Uh, another company that was with you that would be at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? Well, that, that was uh, the Honor Guard Company that, uh -huh. that was at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. It was all the same, same branch. I see. Yeah. Uh, did you ever pull any duty at uh, the Unknown Soldier? Uh, no, no. Oh. Just, just went and, and saw it myself, you know, when we was off duty. Uh -huh. Quite impressive. Yes. Yeah. Well, you guys performed somewhat the same type of duty, though. Yeah. Uh, ba basically the same thing, but 
are similar, but not, not as strenuous right. as, as those guys. Did you have to make any like commitments about, I understand those fellows weren't allowed to smoke or use uh, profane language of any sort? Yeah, you, you know, uh, you didn't hear that stuff go on. So uh, whether it was not permitted or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it di didn't. Uh, well, you had to be standing tall, as the expression goes, uh, with a, a, a creased uniform and well, highly, highly polished shoes. Actually, uh, they wanted taller people. And, and actually, me being six foot, I, I was, wasn't one of the taller guys. Uh, Usually, I, I would say six two, six three guys were the norm. Were, were the norm at uh, Tomb of the, Un uh, Tomb of the Unknown. Mm -hmm. And I guess you march a little better when you're a little taller, or stuff like that too. Most of the guys in your company B were your height. My my height are, are taller. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, who took care of, keep, of keeping your uniform so sharp looking, pressed and dry cleaned and uh, you had a uh, company that would pick them up and, and bring them back to you, or you had a dry cleaners there on post that, that you could take them to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, and the material they made out of, they stayed pretty, pretty press. Uh -huh. And uh, how often do you have to spit on your shoes? Continuously. <laughs> Every day, just about. Uh -huh. You got a knack for it. Uh, if you got the polish built up, you could run them under cold water with, uh, with a piece of cotton and it'd bring them right back. Yeah, there's little uh, cotton wads. It, yeah, cotton balls, yeah. yeah. Summertime, the hot summer would melt that polish on them and then you'd have to really work on them then. Mm -hmm. Not bragging, but I got pretty good at uh, polishing shoes and come inspection time, I'd get 25 bucks a pair for polishing the guy's shoes to put them in looking good. Uh -huh. But uh, That was big money too. It was, that was darn good money then. Yeah. Darn good money. You're awful humble. Well, that's a, a good trait about you, Ira, but you were part of one of the most elite groups of the United States Army at that time. At that time, yeah, and, and oh, still, still is, still is, still, still is, is, yes. I shouldn't yeah. have said at that time, yeah. but it still is. Yeah, still is, yeah. You have to be Yeah, I'm to... very proud to say that I was there. I didn't realize what I was in when I was first went there, but I later on realized what it, what it was, you know. And you had no idea you were going to be selected for that type of duty? None whatsoever. You just uh, acting your normal self. No, normal self, yeah. Well, somebody saw an awful lot of yeah of good in you. I already well, picked you for when, that. when I went into service, they said, "Do what you're asked to do," and 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 that's what I did, you know. And don't bother for, dear for anything, but uh, <laughs> but uh, do what you're supposed to do, and yeah. that's what I did. So. Uh, your your duty then uh, was guarding uh, the eternal flame. Um, did any of the Kennedys come there while you were there? Uh, y yes, uh, at at times you know early early part. Right. Yeah, they they was people come you know that was did Kennedy his, family come through. Did his wife ever but, come there? Uh, I know she did, but uh, I've seen the pictures in the paper where she was there, but. Not while I was on duty I there. See. I see. So you pulled that duty, that was your primary duty? Were you also doing casket duty at the uh, okay. same time? Okay, oh yeah, that, that was just part of your duty there. Uh, eternal flame and then casket duty and then in the spring we did the flag store at uh, Washington Monument. What uh, is that? The flag what? Uh, the flag store, all the flags. They tell the history of the flags at the Washington Monument. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, uh, you had to tell the history of all the flags? Well, uh, well some, the narrator would, would say, and then you'd step out with the flag and tilt it. And, uh, and uh, 
It, it, it was pretty neat. You were on parade duty at all times. All, all time, yeah. And then uh, also with the flag duty, uh, we went to uh, St. Louis when uh, their centennial mm -hmm. and uh, put on the flag store there when they was building the arches and all that stuff. Right. So uh, we, we did a little traveling. Uh, the old guard went to the, the New York to the World's Fair. Now I was just a newbie then, I didn't get to go then. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I could have gone, but uh, I wasn't one of them that was picked to go. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, none none of us new guys got to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we'd been there a month or so longer, we'd have went, went to the World's Fair. What they did there, I'm sure it was a flag store and stuff like that again. Uh -huh. But uh, but uh, we you know we didn't go. So. So after about 90 days, did you continue pulling guard duty at the flame of, of Kennedy, or did you? Well, I, you know, I don't remember how long they uh, kept it going on there. I, I would say maybe four or five months at the most, and then we were pulled off of that. And what were your duties when you were pulled off of that? Uh, still, still burial in Arlington Cemetery parades and, and stuff like that. How many, uh, how many funerals a, a day would you have then? Well, is, two, that, is that the right word, funeral? Uh, yeah, uh, two, two or three. Uh, and, and, and you didn't do it every day, uh, but every week you had two or three days that you did funerals though. Uh -huh. and where would you pick the caskets up at? Uh, actually, the, the, either a caisson off a caisson, or uh, a hearse would bring them in, and you'd, you'd take them out of the casket and march up to the cemetery with the carrying the casket and over the grave, and they'd have their ceremony, and you'd fold the flag. Did you fold the flag? Yeah, yes, uh huh. And uh, you would give that to to the to, heirs to the, the living the living person, yeah. Or if it if it wasn't no one there, you gave it to the the pastor that did the funeral. Did you lower the caskets into the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we uh, I, actually I said we did. No, we didn't. The, they had uh, things setting over the casket, or you know, over the the but grave. You, you would set it. Over you would set grave. it down. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, How many men did they have that uh, would carry a casket? Six. Six of you? Three on each side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had, that was a very uh, regimented ceremonial type, yeah. the way you marched or stepped? Yeah, yeah. I, I said six, there they was actually seven of us, because a guy, if, if he was gonna, gonna present the flag, he was behind the casket too. And you folded it and handed it to him. And uh, he presented the flag. Uh -huh. Do you remember any of the guys that you served with on that duty? Uh, remember some of them's names, but uh, not a lot of them. I know Carl Maxwell, Jim Bartlett, uh, uh, Darren Johnson, a uh, few guys like that, uh, Wingard, Charlie Wingard and guys like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of them uh, I don't have any, con uh, none of them I have any contact with now. But I do have a, a guy that I get a Christmas card with when he's in basic training, uh, actually two guards. I get a Christmas card every year from two guards, uh, two guys I was in basic training with. One of them's uh, uh, Johnny, uh, Reeves and uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other boy's name. Uh, uh, I got he lives in Michigan. I got it on the tip of my tongue. My mind right. blank now. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah. And um, Ringel, Ron Ringel, come tell me. I'm not quite gone yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Do you ever meet up with any of the boys after we got uh, out? Uh, I've I've. Uh, uh, Johnny Reeves, he used to work for the government. He'd go through and would stop and see me once or twice. And Rangel, I see him two or three times a year. He, he'll be going through on vacation and he stops 
at the barber shop and yeah. and uh, and say say hi. And he's got a real estate company now, and and he is an auctioneer. But uh, he ought to be able to be a good auctioneer because he could talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, how long did you do your do that type of duty there uh, that you were in in Company B? Uh, till, well, I actually finished out. My, I had two year enlistment with when I got drafted, and went up there. And I'd say I was there eighteen months, something like that. And um, what other duties besides um, we covered? Uh, the assassination of uh, President Kennedy, and we covered uh, your guarding the eternal flame, and we covered uh, the gasket, uh, casket, yeah, uh, Lauren caskets. Uh, what other duties did you uh, have to perform while you were there? Actually, that about covers everything other than, you know, marching in parades and stuff like that and then honor guard for dignitaries coming in and out of the, you know, that area. Uh, any other dignitaries you remember? Not, uh, not really. Uh, occasionally, we'd have to go to the Pentagon and, and uh, pick up some papers and go to uh, Congress and hand them out. And, but uh, that wasn't very, very often. Mm -hmm. I, I can only recall once or twice we went to the Pentagon uh, to That's do stuff place, like that. Pardon? That's a pretty big place, isn't uh, it? Oh, I get lost in that place. <laughs> it, it was, you know, just the way it's built. Uh, it, it, it is it's strange in there. Uh, when, when you would pick up dignitaries, any uh, high-ranking generals that you recall you would pick up? Or? I, I don't recall their names, but uh, I, actually we would just go there. They'd be coming in on all plane. You'd be at the airport? We'd be the honor guard, be at the airport uh, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, I think you mentioned you owned a, a Chevrolet convertible or something? Pardon me? You said, I think you told me once in, that you owned a Chevrolet convertible. Yeah, you yeah I had a 59 Chevy convertible. Where, where'd you buy it at while you were in the service? Honestly, uh, I had it when I went in the service. And uh, after I got up to the old guard, I took it up there with me. 59? 59? 59 Chevy convertible, yeah. What White color? with red interior. Uh -huh. It was a pretty sharp car. I wish I still had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you uh, and you mentioned your wife was uh, went into the rotunda when President Kennedy was laid out. But was she? She wasn't your wife then. Uh, no, she. Was, were you? Was she? You engaged to her at that time? Uh, at at that time, I was yes. Okay. Uh, uh, but how I met her, I was on KP and, and Charles Bartlett or Jimmy Bartlett and uh, Carl Maxwell. They borrowed my car. And they saw uh, these three ladies, uh, my wife and uh, Patty and, and, and Beverly, walking down the street pushing a grocery cart. And they stopped and offered to take them to their apartment uh, with their groceries. And we got invited over to their house at, or their apartment that night. And that's how I met my wife. I was on KP. What was your wife's name? Uh, Louise. And her main name? Uh, Bud. B-U-D-D? B-U-D-D, uh-huh. Uh, and yeah. uh, she, would she live in apartments with other girls? W with three other girls, yeah. She worked for uh, the FBI. She was secretary and uh, J. Edgar Hoover was uh, head of the FBI at that time. And uh, so uh, one thing led to another and ended up getting married. How long did you go with her? Uh, uh, six or eight months. Uh, and wait, then, did you, was it like love at first sight or? Uh, yes and no. Actually, I started out with uh, one of the other girls uh, talking to her and uh, uh, my uh, friend Jim Bartlett, uh, he was talking to my wife and she said, I don't think I like him. I'd rather talk to you. And 
<laughs> so that's how it got started. <laughs> and oh, yeah. and uh, we, like I say, went together. And my oldest son, he was born in February, and I got out in May. Uh, of uh, 1965. 65, yeah. 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 Um, and he was born on his mother's birthday. And what was that? Uh, he was born in Arlington Hospital uh, in uh, Virginia. But uh, what was that? The date uh, he was born in February. Uh, February nineteenth. And that was your. Uh, wife's that's my birthday? wife's birthday. Yes. Uh, did and your wife work for anybody that we would know uh, as a secretary there? Uh, uh, only thing I know, uh, one time, uh, she. Uh, uh, what department she worked in, but she made uh, some kind of suggestion and she got a letter, which my son Scott has, from J. Edgar Hoover thanking her for the suggestion that she'd made. So, uh, but after, uh, after uh, I got out of service, she left up there and we came back to, to Carrollton and then I got a job with Commonwealth Life Insurance for a couple of years and then I didn't like that that well collecting insurance, selling, although I did sell a half million dollars worth of insurance two years in a row and went to a uh, couple of conventions for them, uh, insurance conventions, and then decided to get, I'd always talk about one of my other good friends uh, was a barber, our company barber, and I always thought as a kid I wanted to be a barber, I don't know why, but uh, 50 years later or 50 plus years later I'm still doing it. Well, when did, when did you start barbering? Uh, uh, I actually went to barber school uh, in 66. Where at? Uh, Moeller, here in Cincinnati. That was down here in? Uh, Main Cincinnati. Street. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, went to work at Reddish Corner for about three months, run into Marvin Lewis, uh, and he needed a barber. There was three where I was at with uh, Gene Record and Buddy Isaacs. And then Marv, we was going to a razor cutting hairstyling school. Uh, George Jarman and I forget what the other fellow's name was teaching it. And uh, Marv said he needed a barber. Roy Gold was leaving, going to the post office. Right. And he t was talking about how much money Roy was making. I said, man, that's a lot more money than I'm making. So dollar signs started rolling and, and I made the change. Now Gene kept telling me don't, uh, Gene Record said, don't go, said, uh, there's something going on, but he wouldn't tell me what it was, but he got appointed to the Barber's Board, State Barber's Board, and uh, I would have been all right there, but I'm all right where I'm at now, too. Well, you know that uh, you cut my hair on the first day that you were uh, yeah, yeah. barbering. Yeah, uh, barbering, yeah, yeah. And uh, I wasn't your first one. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I started there. I was there the first day because uh, Roy Gold cut my hair too, and I remember him. He said he quit and went to work for the post office. Yeah, I remember yeah. that just like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like it was yesterday. And and uh, I started there in '67, uh, uh, right after uh, what, day remember? after Thanksgiving. Day after Thanksgiving. Day after Thanksgiving. In 1967. Yeah. I was working down the street at. Uh, Shot forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Uh, actually, I remember you working for uh, Lanigan. Yeah. Remember uh, uh, Ford dealership, uh, Mard Shot. Yeah. Quite, right. quite a few different yeah. dealerships you worked at. I've been having my hair cut by you off and on for since 1967. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But you, uh, I was curious. Why you went into barbering, but you said you wanted to be a barber for some reason. Since for you for some born. reason, when I was a kid, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, I was probably three or four years old when my mother ever cut my hair. I had long, blonde, curly hair. And my brother Terry was the same way with brown, curly hair. And she liked her curls, and finally we got it cut off. And, and uh, uh, the barber that cut my hair then he told me he was running an airplane over my head, and I, I guess I got it buzzed off. <laughs> I don't recall now, but anyway, uh, I said I was going to take that airplane home with me <laughs> as a kid, you know. And uh, but uh, for some reason, I always wanted to be a barber after that. Um, and your wife's first name was Louise. Louise, uh -huh. and. Uh, 
when you came home from the service, uh, had she already, uh, did, was she still working for the FBI when no, the she, boy was born? Uh, she she just had just quit when he was born. Uh, yeah. Now, did she go back to work when you come home? Uh, did she? Uh, she didn't for a while, but then when I went to barber school, she said, uh, why don't you uh, go to barber school on the GI Bill and, uh, and I'll go back to work. And she worked for a place here in Cincinnati called Bymon Walworths. Who? Bymon Walworths or something like that. It was an admiral dealership. And she worked there for a while and then- uh, What kind of a dealership? Pardon? What kind of a dealership? Uh, admiral. Sold Admiral TVs, appliances, oh, yes, refrigerators, yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And Johnny Bench went with uh, the guy's daughter at that time, too. And where was that located? Uh, it was somewhere here in Cincinnati. Uh, I think it was, uh, if I'm mistaken, oh, I'm trying to think of the exit uh, off of 75 it was. I don't recall now, but uh, uh, it slips in my mind. And how long did she work there? She worked there a good while, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, uh, she wanted, uh, uh, I was getting out of barber school, and uh, she wanted to uh, take vacation. They didn't want her to take vacation. And uh, so she quit that and went to work for another company. It was a printing company, but I don't, uh, Chatfield Paper, Chatfield mm -hmm. Paper yeah. she went to work for. And then, of course, I went work in Latonia for Jean for about two or three months and then over with Marv mm -hmm. and still still in Newport, Yeah, 53 years later. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many children did you all have? Uh, we have four. Four, and what were their names? Uh, Greg, Gregory and Cheryl, uh, Scott and Chris. Yeah. yeah. And your one boy lives in New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah, yeah. Scott. Yeah. He worked, started out working for, uh, uh, for MICA and the company over there, another company bought him out and kept him working for them over there. They've got uh, three girls, uh, uh, Ashley, uh, Hannah, and uh, Laney. And Hannah's a, a senior in college. Laney just graduated from high school and she's going to college to be a nurse. And Laney, or, or Ashley, lives in Denver, Colorado. She's not over there with them. And uh, she's a paralegal. Mm -hmm. In fact, just called me last night and said she just got engaged. So she got a big diamond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and I see where Chris is uh, following your footsteps. He's working with you now as a barber. Yeah, yeah. He worked there since early 90s uh, when I'd get him to work, but he's, he's working better now. <laughs> yeah. He's got to grow up a little bit, you know. Uh, um, the, uh, Brian, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, I have a couple. So you got drafted in 63? 63, yes. So, um, I, I missed Vietnam about six months. Yeah. Were people, when you were in the Army training, was that something that people, was on people's minds, or was that even something that was even talked about when you were, like, in training and, or in the time that you were in service? Not, 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 they didn't talk about it too much. Uh, most guys got drafted, didn't like it, because they didn't want to go to service, but, uh, but it, it didn't bother me, you know. You were discharged on April the 9th, 65. Of 65. Yeah. yeah. But I, I guess uh, when you were uh, at Arlington Cemetery, there weren't any casualties coming in yet. That was pretty early on. Was there any, any um, guys that were killed in action that, uh, that came through during your time? Uh, in, in the old guard, I know uh, we had a couple of guys that were. Uh, platoon sergeant in the old guard that volunteered for Vietnam and I remember one's name was Sergeant Terry uh, he went to Vietnam and he didn't last long he got killed as soon as he got over there but that, that's the only ones I recall
And I had a brother, Dave, that was wounded in Vietnam, lost uh, his right leg. David, uh, was your brother, do you remember what outfit he was in in Vietnam? I, I do not. Uh, I, in fact, I aimed to copy that off, uh, get Chris to show me a picture of all these medals and things. Uh, but I don't remember what outfit he was in. I know he was in infantry. Infantry? Yeah. yeah. And uh, but, he uh, got, got what, what happened to him over there? Uh, uh, he lost his leg. Uh, actually, it had his time up, uh, to, so he was ready to come home. And for some reason, uh, they had a, a platoon. They want, or, or uh, uh, they wanted some kind of thing. They wanted him to go out. He volunteered for it. He was an E5, and he took a group out, and they, a booby trap uh, blew his leg off. And actually, he said uh, it was still on. He could still wiggle his toes, but they said it had to be amputated. And he came back to Fort Gordon, Georgia. And uh, actually, he was over in the hospital over there. I guess, I assume they amputated his leg over there. But uh, he uh, came back pretty bitter for a while. But then he married and got two kids. And like I say, he just passed away. Uh, 74 years old, but he was pretty well decorated over there. He had a bronze, uh, bronze star and two, two uh, uh, no, a silver star and two bronze stars. He was, must have been a pretty good soldier. Silver star is about the third highest rank of medal that you can be awarded. He, he must have been a, quite a soldier. He was say. quite a soldier. Did he have a military ceremony or at all? Or? Did he have one now? Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Was he there in a national ceremony? Uh, uh, no, uh, actually he had military group that was there, but he was cremated. And uh, that's what he wanted to be. And, uh, uh, but uh, they uh, had a memorial service actually on my birthday. Uh, and uh, just had service at a church there where he went to church and the military uh, firing squad outside and, and they folded the flag off the casket or, or actually unfolded the flag and refolded it in the service. So with the, with the old guard, I mean, I don't know much of the history. Do you, could you tell us a little bit about its background? Do you know how far it goes or anything like that? Uh, it it's, goes way back. Uh, I think it tells the, the date uh, when it started. I, I'll read this to you, Brian. Uh, the Old Guard is the oldest infantry unit in the United States Army, predating the Constitution to 1784. It is responsible for ceremonial and security missions in the nation's capital to include guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier, conducting military funerals in Arlington National Cemetery, and various ceremonial functions for the President of the United States and other American and foreign government officials. Because of its unique and highly important mission, only selected personnel are assigned to the Old Guard. The qualifications include not only superior personal appearance, but also exemplary records of conduct and intelligence. You may take pride, therefore, in being a member of the Old Guard. That, uh, that's quite a testimonial to <laughs> you, Ira. Um, I'm, I, you can probably tell I'm proud to, proud to know you and as modest as you are, that's quite a, a resume. Yeah. Uh, so you were in service when, when it was the, uh, kind of the 100th anniversary of the Civil War time period. Were there anything going on uh, to mark at that time of the Civil War? Uh, not to my knowledge. I was just wondering because I knew probably Lee's uh, house was there in Arlington. Yeah, oh yeah, o overlooking the, the whole cemetery, yeah. 
um, ever uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, we'd have to pl place flags on all the graves in Arlington too. Um, actually, at uh, Arlington, belong the cemetery, the property, and everything belonged to his wife's family, Mary Custis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a yeah. granddaughter of George Washington. Yeah. yeah. Yes, adopted. Okay. Um, right, right. Well, yeah. I guess Mary yeah, George's. George's wife. Wife's yeah. Martha, uh -huh. right? um, and um, the head of the quartermaster corps didn't like Lee, and when his son was killed, he had him buried right in the front yard of uh, Lee's house. Oh, oh yeah. Montgomery yeah. Meggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just coming back to me there. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, Go ahead, Brian, I'm sorry. When you were there, I was just curious. I have an uncle who's buried in Arlington. Well, he's not, he's in a, he's screaming, he's in a niche. Did those exist uh, when you were there? Do you remember? Like, there's a section where people were cremated and put it to the wall. Uh, you, uh, d since you said that, does ring a bell now. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd forgotten about that, though. You had ceremonies for the ones that were cremated also? Uh, we didn't. It was only ones that we, you know, was buried there. Um, but uh, uh, not any ceremony I was on was for cremation. Were you, was your unit also part of the 21 Gun Salida, or was that another unit that would handle the... Say again? Part? Twenty-one gun salute. If they did that, was that part of your unit too? Did you guys? Uh, 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 actually, uh, the twenty-one gun, gun salute was a funeral when they'd had the cannon, but uh, the rifles wasn't uh, wasn't uh, twenty-one guns. Would they shoot off a cannon uh, for for a uh, uh, really uh, dignitary? Uh, just like Kennedy, mm -hmm. it was a cannon that shot to, for him. Did you partake in any 21 gun salutes? Pardon? Did you yourself partake? Uh, no, no, uh-uh. You just uh, were handling the casket, so to speak. Casket, yes, uh-huh. Well, you would have dignitaries come, and you said you were honor guard. What would that involve? Would you have to? Do you have to do a certain ceremonial? No, you were just there uh, to, uh, I actually, uh, I still remember McCarthy and McCarty. They brought them in on a train and we were just there uh, as guard. a parent, standing guard, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if you had to walk along with them. Uh, no, uh-uh. Uh, you said you say MacArthur? Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's buried there also? Uh, well, uh, we just, uh, wasn't a part of his uh, funeral. They brought him in on a train and they took casket off the train and we were just there as an honor guard. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. And was the, uh, the old guard, were they exclusively just uh, Arlington Cemetery or did they ever do any kind of other national cemeteries? I. I, I assume just just right there. Except but I'm not we, sure. And, but they took you uh, like you, I think you mentioned going to St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah, yeah. That uh, was for we put on the flag story there. Uh huh. And then, uh, uh, but that was for their centennial. Mm -hmm. How many flags are there at Washington Monument? You. Had, yeah, uh, you know, I honestly don't know now. <laughs> I don't know where you, uh, since the earthquake, I don't know where they've ever opened it back up yet or not. Uh, they had a lot of repair to do on it mm -hmm. where you couldn't go. You, you know, I've been up the steps and things when I was up there, but uh, uh, I know it had an earthquake and did a lot of damage and, and uh, I don't know where uh, it's, even opened up back up yet or not. Yeah. Did you ever do anything other than the rotunda with, with JFK? Anything else at the Capitol building? Uh, 
was there a time or two, but not, nothing major. Just handing out, uh, if it uh, was some literature that had to be handed to senators or congressmen or something like that, we, uh, we'd pass them out. But you was in and out, and that was it. Well, I, uh, had been, uh, uh, I'd heard Moeller was the best school. And uh, uh, my wife and I came here, and then we came up on Vine Street to Cincinnati. And uh, there were so many prostitutes and guys wanting to sell your stuff. I said, I'm an old farm boy. I don't want this part of life. <laughs> so I went back and enrolled in Moeller on on uh, Fourth and Main, but uh, it, it was for an old country boy. It was quite an experience. Although you saw that a little bit in D.C. though too. But uh, I thought it was a little better area down Fourth and Main. Of course, all that's gone now. Where, where is your wife from? Where's she from? Uh, Ashleyville, Ohio, Jefferson, the city of Jefferson, Ashleyville County. Up there near Cleveland? Uh, uh, yeah, Cleveland. South, southeast of, uh, of uh, Cleveland. Actually, probably 90 miles northeast of Cleveland, right. almost to Erie, Pennsylvania. And you guys, uh, then you do your honeymoon at uh, Niagara Falls? Niagara Falls, yes, uh-huh. And planning on taking a couple of granddaughters, great granddaughters there, uh, when we go back in July for a uh, family reunion. You you have a, fam a family reunion up there? Up there, it's yeah. my wife's side of the family. Uh -huh. Yeah, even though she's not here, she's been gone 15 years. She had leukemia. Well, but she. I was going to say she come from a great family. Did she come from a big family, or how many siblings did she have? How, how many was in her family? Brothers and sisters, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I think there was eleven of them all, eleven of them all together. Yeah. Uh, a couple passed away, but uh, there's only uh, Ray, Betty. Uh, Fran, uh, not Fran, uh, Evie and uh, Doreen, uh, on, only four of them left now. So did you ever have any thoughts of staying in the Army or were you, after you got your two years, you were ready? Honestly, I thought about staying in and then uh, Vietnam was getting bad and uh, they was talking about extending us and then uh, they were recruiting guys for Arlington's Police Department, and uh, uh, I thought about going on to pl doing police work, uh, and uh, and then uh, a lot of cops that was getting killed then. It was kind of bad, and so I had a job uh, with Commonwealth Life Insurance and came back home, worked with them a couple of three years, and then just decided to quit that and go to barber school. Were there, when you were still in the military, were there any uh, race riots and things going on? Well, uh, at one time, uh, they put us in deuce and a halfs with live ammunition, and uh, we thought we was going over to D.C., and uh, that, that shook you up a little bit. I can imagine. But, but uh, we sat there for a good two or three hours on that, before they decided to take your, turn your weapons back in and ammunition. And, uh, but that, that was the only time. What, what were the riots over there then? Uh, uh, they, uh, riots, yeah. Uh, riots and, and it was a black situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I didn't realize it was that bad until 
they put us on alert and issued live ammunition and weapons and said, uh, was going to haul us over there. That had to be um, a, a scary situation. That, that was a scary situation, yeah. I can see why your wife probably wanted you to go to the barber school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, you were based out, out of Newport, Kentucky, or are you still are? Say again? You're based out of Newport, Kentucky? Uh, my barber shop is yeah. in Newport, yes. Uh -huh. Well, Newport is kind of known for quite, quite some uh, interesting characters. Well, uh, when I started there it was, but it's, it's not that bad anymore. Well, for people who aren't not, familiar with Newport, Kentucky history, can you tell yeah. a little bit about well, particularly uh, the early years of your career? Uh, the first guy, honestly, uh, he was pretty close to the first guy, but I started on a Saturday after uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, well, actually a Thursday, uh, Friday after Thanksgiving. And uh, the first guy, I get there, and Marvin Lewis owned the shop at that time, and uh, the first guy that I cut was Red Matcherson, and he was known as supposedly a hitman, wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, uh, had a lot of guys, of course, they didn't know me from Adam. And uh, uh, they said, I'll wait on Marv, I'll wait on Marv. And then Red said, well, I'll give the boy a chance. So I uh, cut his hair, and thereafter cut his hair till he passed away. And cut a lot of Dave Whitfield, uh, Sammy Eisner, uh, just a lot of guys. Uh, who were those guys for people who don't know those names? Well, they, they were all uh, figures in, in uh, I don't know how you'd say it, uh, they run businesses there, uh, a lot of guys. Uh, <laughs> By businesses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> prostitute houses and things, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, they uh, killed Sammy, somebody assassinated Sammy Eisner. Sa yeah, somebody assassinated him, uh, Kelly Blaine Eisner. I actually, before I moved up to where I'm at at Seventh Mammoth, she'd worked for uh, Jose and, and Wayne Carlisle. She was kind of taking care of their stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, Ralph Bridewell, a bunch of Bridewells. Uh, they, they ran uh, prostitute houses and things. Yeah. T uh, Tiger Bridewell or something like that. Uh, t uh, um, Tuffy, yeah, Tuffy Bridewell, yeah, yeah. Tuffy, Bridewell. Tuffy Bridewell, yeah. And um, um, what about Vance Riley? Did you ever cut his hair? I, I never did. I, I knew him to see. Now he was Kelly Blaine's brother, I think, wasn't he? Something like that. Yeah, it? yeah. They killed but him I, too. I, I, I knew him to see, but that was it. They killed. I knew him. a lot of guys that ran around with him, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, I think they killed him down there at the uh, Gladiator. Gladiator, yeah, yeah. Well, when you were cutting those guys' hair, obviously you probably didn't talk about their, their business much, but we, what were they interested in talking about when they were getting their hair? Just natural stuff. <laughs> the, 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 they, they didn't, uh, if I hadn't, when I went to work for Marv, he'd point out uh, uh, guys and, say, and he would tell me, you know, what they did, you know, and I, I had no clue. They, they didn't broadcast it or anything. Another guy was Cue Ball. Uh, <laughs> Cue Ball, yeah. Cue Ball, uh, he, uh, he must have been a real bad guy, but when he come in and got a haircut, he was just as normal and good as could be, you know. Did you cut Sammy Wright's hair? Sammy Wright, yes, yeah. Sammy Wright was supposed to be the last living member of the Purple Gang out of Detroit? Uh, yeah, yeah. And his wife had a place up the street there too, uh, what, uh, a bar. I'm trying to think what, uh, up on Mama Street, because a guy lived in the back room, uh, uh, Bob Ward, uh, in the back of the barbershop. Uh, he'd go up there after he'd get off. He worked for uh, 
a place over here somewhere, I forget what it was he worked at, but uh, he'd go up there, and, but I, I remember him calling her by name, but I, I don't remember what it was now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, he's the one that they, uh, that they uh, caught at the Los Angeles airport and he had uh, $2.2 million uh, in, in, yeah. in the briefcase. In the briefcase, yeah, and, I remember that, and yeah. He, and his famous words to the FBI when they surrounded him was, well, I just rented this van. I don't know who that belongs to. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they actually had him on 60 Minutes. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But, uh, and I think you cut the, the guys who were one of the first chili parlors, the, the Circus Honest Brothers. Art and Charlie. Art and Charlie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had something to do with uh, with that George Ratterman thing. George too, Ratterman, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I, I didn't know that. I was in the service when that was going on with oh, April Flowers. Right. Uh, yeah, April Flowers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, heard about that. And that, that, now, when I was in the service, uh, when you told them you was from Kentucky, everybody knew about Newport. They say, how close to Newport? Uh, and that's crazy. I mean, that was the first thing they said to you. How close were you, are you to Newport? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody knew about Newport. You, did you cut George Ratterman's hair by any chance? Uh, no, 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 I didn't. Uh uh. Yeah. But, uh what about, like, what's the guy? Who's the big famous guy who they pushed up or fell out of the window in the hospital? Who am I thinking of? He what? Yeah. Uh, uh, suppose that that's the story he was pushed out there. Uh, the story was he jumped, yeah. What the heck was his name? Uh, Screw Andrews. Screw Andrews, yeah, yeah. Screw Andrews, yeah. Uh, no, no, I just knew who he was and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, there, you've, uh, it seems like a, a barber is uh, like a priest. Yeah. He gets all the stories. He gets stories, they, yeah, stuff yeah. Stuff they've yeah. never talked to anybody yeah. else about. But yeah. They they, that's what they say, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find out something, go ask the barber, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, every one of my friends, uh, all of my friends that went to your barber shop yeah, all yeah. their lives. Of course, all of my buddies are Gone now too. They're gone, uh, pretty well gone. Uh, yeah. How long have you been in the location now? Have you always been in the same uh, location? Actually, I was 30 years at Fourth and Monmouth. Uh, uh, 20 of those, uh, the, Marv, he passed away with cancer. 10 years I worked with him. I worked another 20 years there. And then they was going to build a Millennium Tower on the block we was at and it didn't come about, moved up uh, by the pepper pod, 7th Monmouth. Uh, they owned the building I'm in, and it's all the same building, and I've been there 23 years. Yeah, um, and my son, Christopher, works with me. Well, now, the last, what, 15, 20 years, Newport's really, you've got like uh, uh, it, it's and all that. Now. It's different. It, uh, I can remember the levee being fine hour welding and car lots and uh, daycare place, uh, the palm shop where the lady Reduce read the, your palm, yeah. Read your palms, yeah. Uh, uh, I forget that madam's uh, name. Uh, I want to say Madam Lena or something like I that. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and her her sons all still come in the barber shop too. Casey, uh, uh, Charlie, uh, Freddie, uh, Dee just lost his wife. Uh, a couple of those boys are dead now too. That was her children. Did you ever do uh, the chief of police there, Google? Uh, not, not Google, but I did it, Terry Google. His son, I don't know what ever happened to Terry. Uh, yeah. And then... Uh, Moose Jones, did he do Moose, uh, uh, cut Moose's hair. And then, uh, what was the guy that had uh, the Fuzz Club? He was chief of police for a while. Uh, 
and see his face, can't put it, he's passed on now. Uh, uh, I can't think of his last name now, mm -hmm. though. M Millie was his wife's name, but I, I can't think of what his first name was now. Tom Chambers? I, I, I'd cut Tom's hair and, of course, Eddie. Yeah, Tom was a good brother, yeah. and Eddie too. Yeah. yeah. Darn it, I can't think of what uh, that police chief's name was that, uh, that had the Fuzz Club, yeah. right across from Camel County Shiv. Yeah. Lord, Lord. Um, so I, I guess you, you, you've been through a lot of different hairstyles over the decades. We've seen a lot of hair come and go, yeah. <laughs> it's down to real short hair now. Uh, yeah. From long hair to well, that's flat how, top area. That's uh, how I first got with you was we do a flat top. We yeah, kept, yeah, kept, yeah. Kept yeah. a flat top for years. Yeah. yeah. I already give the best flat top there is and still does. Well, I ain't got enough hair to cut for that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for 80 years old, have, still have pretty steady hands. Yes, yes. Say again. Do you, have, uh, do you have one of your kids who is in New Zealand? Your son lives in New Zealand. Oh, l l lives in New Zealand, yes. Well, what brought him to New Zealand? Uh, his job. Do you, do you know which island is he in? Uh, he, he's, uh, he's on the South Island, uh, no, the North Island. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's summer over there now. In right. fact, I just talked to him Sunday uh, on uh, uh, Grandpa, uh, uh, Grandpad. I've been there one time. I had a friend living there. Uh huh. So I was just curious to what. Yeah. How people end up, Americans end up in New Zealand. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was work. He must know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He took it from his mother. <laughs> I don't know about that now. I'm sure he got yeah. some of it from you, too. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you had a brother that was in service. Did you have any other relatives that went into the military? Uh, my brother, Terry, yeah. Uh, there was three of us boys in the service. My brother, Mike, uh, he, had, he was blind in one eye, had a lazy eye, and my oldest brother, John, had a lazy eye, and neither one of them uh, went to service. Did you guys all, were all Army? The Army, yes, uh-huh. Where'd your other brother serve? Uh, Say again? Where did your other brother serve? Was he in Vietnam too? Uh, uh, both of them in Vietnam. Actually, David and Terry were in Vietnam same time. Now, uh, David was sent over to Vietnam and then uh, Terry had gotten out and he was in the NASA Guard and they sent the NASA Guard unit. He was artillery unit and they sent them over. Mm -hmm. And they was in Vietnam, two brothers at the same time. Yeah. What, what year would that have been they were over there? Gosh, I'd have to think back. It was after, uh, I, uh, well, I got out of service 65. I would, I want to say neighborhood 68, 69, somewhere mm -hmm. along in there. Yeah, when it was real, real heavy. Over real there. heavy, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. They would send a yeah. National Guard over, I guess. Right, yeah. Well, that's all yeah. my questions. Is that all? Yeah. All right, is that there end any, it? <laughs> is there anything else you want to uh, add? No, no, that's, that's, that's it. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to take this time to thank you. I appreciate this, it, yeah. For this interview. Well, I told you that you was looking for a, uh, a bad person to <laughs> interview. No, no. Because I'm, no. I'm not an interview person. Cameras usually scare me to death. <laughs> well, yeah. I want to thank you for your service to our country and for your continued I appreciate it. Thank you for your service also. Thank you. Yeah.